Thank you so much, and thank you for the great gift of this day. It has been absolutely spectacular. Almost a year ago, 85 people from around the world gathered here in Rome for what has been called a landmark conference on nonviolence and just peace. Invited by the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, the precursor of the present dicastery, and Pax Christi International, participants came together to imagine a new framework for Catholic social teaching on war and peace that could help the world move beyond perpetual violence and war, that could help us address the root causes of the suffering and displacement that we've heard about so, uh, with such passion today. Central to our conversation last year were the voices of people promoting active nonviolence in the midst of horrific violence, among them the voices of women. Many participants came from countries that have been at war or caught in the midst of violence for decades. Iraq, Sri Lanka, Colombia, South Sudan, the DR Congo, Mexico, Afghanistan, Palestine, El Salvador, the Philippines, Northern Ireland, Lebanon, Burundi, Guatemala, and more. Their testimony was incredibly powerful. Iraqi Dominican sister Nazak Mati, whose community was expelled from Mosul by ISIS a few years ago, said, we can't respond to violence with worse violence. In order to kill five violent men, we have to create 10 violent men to do the killing. It's like a dragon with seven heads, she said. You cut one and two others come up. Ogari Yunan, who co-founded the Academic University for Nonviolence and Human Rights in Lebanon, shared her positive experience of equipping youth, educators, and community leaders throughout the Middle East with nonviolent skills to end vicious cycles of violence and discrimination. Jesuit Francisco Duru told the story of Ama Rosa Hamarillo, a courageous woman, an audacious lawyer, he said, who had joined their team in the Magdalena Medio region of Colombia to support displaced small farmers. She was kidnapped by the ELN, a revolutionary group, and finally released. Then she was captured by the paramilitaries. When we managed to recover Amarosa, Francisco told us, she was lying in the mud, dead. They had cut off her arms and her legs with a chainsaw. Immediately, another woman stepped into her place, as did her son, Jesus, and the team continued to talk with the guerrillas, with the paramilitaries, with the military, searching for a nonviolent solution to a war that had gone on for 50 years. Over and over again, Francisco and his team heard from campesinos, from native people, from Afro-Colombians, from people whose youngsters had joined the military, the paramilitary, the guerrilla groups, they said over and over again, stop the war. Stop the war now. Stop the war on all sides. Gathered in Rome last year, we heard similar stories from many of the conference participants. Courageous people in local communities living with unimaginable danger the kind that you were talking about, Scylla. Stop the militarization, they said. Stop the bombing. Stop the proliferation of weapons. Rely on nonviolent strategies to transform conflict. Together, during the conference, we wrote an appeal to the Catholic Church to recommit to the centrality of gospel nonviolence, urging the church, the institutional church, to move beyond the language of just war that has been central to Catholic theology on war and peace for centuries, and to integrate gospel nonviolence explicitly into the life, including the sacramental life, and the work of the church through dioceses and parishes, through schools, universities, seminaries, religious orders, voluntary associations, 
and on and on, using the structure of the church to make a difference in this world. We asked Pope Francis to write his World Day of Peace message this year on the theme of nonviolence, and someday to write an encyclical on nonviolence. Obviously, we were delighted with his 2017 World Day of Peace message on nonviolence, a style of politics for peace. But central to the church's process of studying and promoting active nonviolence must be the full participation of women. Women who are theologians to help develop a new moral framework for Catholic social thought on war and peace, a rich theology of nonviolence, and excellent exegesis around the nonviolence of Jesus. Women in politics and social sciences to help articulate effective nonviolent strategies to use in a dangerous world. Grassroots women to design nonviolent practices that can, in fact, protect vulnerable communities. Women in Catholic schools, Catholic universities, seminaries, and parishes who can teach the skills of nonviolence. Women who will bring Catholic values to the public debate on the use, or perhaps sometimes not use, of violent force, either close to home or on the other side of the world. Women who will insist that resources be devoted to meeting basic human needs and protecting the integrity of the natural world, not on building more weapons for war. Women who will help the world shape a just and sustainable peace that responds to the real needs of our families and our local communities, and on and on. What if Catholics were formed from the beginning of life to understand and appreciate the power of active nonviolence and the connection of nonviolence to the heart of the gospel, trained to understand the 21st century implications of love your enemy? What if the Catholic Church committed its vast spiritual, intellectual, and financial resources to developing that new moral framework and language for discerning ways to prevent atrocities, to protect people and the planet in a dangerous world? What if women were central to articulating and implementing this shift in Catholic understanding of and commitment to nonviolence and just peace? For Christians, Nonviolence is a way of life, a positive and powerful force for social change, and a means of building a global community committed to the well-being of all. Active nonviolence is a multi-layered, very diverse approach that is fundamental to the teaching of Jesus and recognizes the humanity of every person, even our sons and daughters, who are perpetrators of terrible violence. It is a process for ending violence without the use of lethal force, for transforming conflict, and for protecting the vulnerable. It is a process that women own in the depths of our souls. Now more than ever, it is time to put active nonviolence into practice in our own neighborhoods and in our world. No one knows how to do this better than the women in any society. And so today, Voices of Faith honors women, makers of peace, and promoters of active nonviolence. We have heard tragic stories today about the horrific consequences of war and atrocity. But these same stories reveal courage, conviction, beauty, and the power of women making peace. It is my honor, my delight, to recognize each of these, one at a time, each of these women peace builders from whom we have heard today, for the great gift of hope and just peace that you all bring to our world. <laughs> 